How's it going you guys, it's Scott with the Everyday Solar and today I want to quickly show you how to get more solar input, more solar charging into your portable power station. In some scenarios that could be two times the solar input than you're getting currently. Now this will work for pretty much any portable power station, but specifically we'll use the EcoFlow River 3, which is a new small portable power station from EcoFlow. It has 245 watt hours of capacity, runs super quiet in pretty much every scenario, and can put out about 300 watts with the capability to charge at 110 watts from the solar input. Now for me, the use case would be something like this. For a power outage scenario, I wanna run my Wi-Fi, charge some of my devices, and keep up and running throughout the day, or maybe even multiple days if it's a longer power outage. Now it's a bright and sunny day outside, so let's plug in one 100 watt panel to this unit, see what we're getting, and then we'll kind of push the limits. How do we do two 100 watt panels? What do we have to do with the configuration? What do we have to do with the wiring to safely bring that in and to fully maximize the solar charging capability throughout the day? Now in this setup, I'm gonna keep the EcoFlow on the inside so I have these two MC4 cables that give me another 30 feet that I can stretch from the 100 watt solar panel. This one specifically from Harbor Freight it has those little built-in kickstands, which are super convenient. And then I'll run that inside. And don't forget, some of these portable power stations, you need a converter cable that doesn't come with it. So just check whichever unit you're going to purchase to make sure you have it. It's kind of bummer if you get going and you don't have it. So we just plugged it in and then spool up. Remember, it's very sunny outside. So we're gonna get all the way up to about 94 or 95 watts. And what that looks like voltage is about 16 volts and six amps coming from that one panel. All right, so let's go ahead and bring out our second 100 watt panel here. So it should be said, we would always prefer to go series if we could, just daisy chaining these panels together and then bringing those into our extension cables. But series will add up your voltages of each panel. In that case, this would be at least 32 in this scenario, and actually voltage open circuit would be much higher than that into the 40. So that'd be well over the maximum voltage for the EcoFlow, which is right at 30. So we can't do that. If you go over the voltage, it shuts everything down. So we have to go in parallel. So you can get these little Y splitters. You can either get ones like this, they give you a little bit more of a pigtail, or you can get these rigid ones that are a little bit more compact. For this setup, we can just use the rigid ones. So we're gonna to bring together each of these in parallel, and then that's gonna maintain our voltage and add up our currents. So we'll just bring these two guys together. Just know if you're doing a permanent setup, you would also want inline fuses that are matched at the maximum current capability of the panels. In this case, I would put 10 amp inline fuses on each of these branches to protect the circuit, just in case we had a failure that we wouldn't be damaging our panels. But for this type of setup, I'm gonna go ahead and go without those. And now as expected, we are maxing out the solar input at 110 watts. Now voltage moved up a little bit, we'd expect that to maintain, but current could only go up slightly because we're maxing that out for the solar input. So if we looked at a power curve here across the day, in blue, this would be if we just plugged in one panel at that 100 watts, we're gonna max out. When we took our data point, this is 9 a.m., noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., it was about at 2 p.m., that was 94 watts. So we're already coming off the top of that curve and down. And then really the energy that we're gonna be producing throughout the day is what's called the area underneath the curve, right? So that is the energy we're gonna be putting into our battery, and that's what we need to balance out with our loads. Now, why having two panels and over paneling is so beneficial, we saw 110. 110 was actually later in the day, it was past 3 p.m. So what that curve would look like if we were over paneling is we'd start coming online at the same time, and then we'd actually shoot up quite a bit faster, and then we would hit this max 110 and we'd travel along there. And then we would start coming back fairly rapidly down. But now we would have all this additional area underneath the curve to fill up the batteries. So overall, we would be putting a lot more into the battery and now that system might be a lot better match for your application. And then here we are clipping. So the power station itself is clipping that current and actually bringing in what it can consume. So that's why we get a bigger part of the day maxing out that solar input. Now let's look at a cloudy day because that's actually usually what you're gonna be designing to. So if we had nine o'clock, noon, three, six, we're gonna go up, 
and probably cap out at about 15 and then down. So our area of under the curve on a cloudy day with a single 100 watt panel is gonna be very limiting. And this is where we can run into trouble, especially if you have multiple overcast days in a row. If you're planning an off-grid system, this is what you're designing to, and this can be a big problem in terms of how many panels and how much battery storage you need. But in this case, over paneling with two 100 watt panels, we would come online about the same time, but then we would ramp up and probably max out at about 30, a true 2X, and then back down. And again, we would then fill up all that additional. So this might save us in terms of the battery capacity being able to last throughout the night and then recharge the next day, even on a cloudy or overcast day. So let me know if you guys have any questions on the overall setup. And when you have that extra solar throughout the day, it would be a good time to charge your devices, such as your laptops or your phones, which you only have to charge once a day and utilize that extra solar. So then your battery goes as far as possible on your continuous draws as the sun starts to go down. Now, I love the portable power stations for multiple different applications around our house, but if you're looking for a whole nother level system to eliminate your monthly power bill, check out the link in the description over to Project Solar. This is a company I used a couple months back. They can connect you up with professional installers in your area to quickly understand the cost and size of a system you need. But here's the kicker. They can also help you do a DIY system. And that's exactly what I did. They helped me with the design of the system, procuring all the parts, submitting all the permits. Then I took it from there, installed the system, and we got it inspected and permission to operate from the utility. And now I'm saving each and every month on my power bill from that system that I installed. From what I've seen with a professionally installed system and one I installed on two different homes, they had some of the best prices that I've at least seen around. So it's at least worth a look if that's something you're interested in. Now, if you wanna see a lot more on that DIY system, check out this video right here. It will walk you through that complete process. So you can kind of size up, is that something you're willing to take on? or do you need to go more with that professionally installed system? So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.